There we are. Hey, uh, I am speaking with the young man, Dylan. Dylan, um, kind of uh, tell us, wow, you're a young-looking guy here. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself and uh, what, what, uh, what's happening here in your world, because you're making some money um, in real estate. Totally. Well, I appreciate it, Ted, here. I'll try not to bore you guys too much. I'll give you the 30-second version of my life. Uh, so I graduated from high school here uh, this past June and uh, 2017 and got introduced into real estate this spring. And at the time, I was doing some college classes along with running my landscaping business. And my goal was throughout the summer to save up enough money and then go full-time into real estate. And so... I did that by September. Uh, I knew that I had enough money to save up to transition full time into real estate. And uh, then started out there and started going to uh, networking groups, meeting with people, those are my cash buyers list, um, networking with other wholesalers, kind of learning the roots of the game and uh, listening to a lot of podcasts and going through all the training and uh, just wealth of knowledge that I had, and really just uh, dove headfirst into it. Well, pretty cool. Well, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about this uh, deal you've done. Uh, I'm seeing some checks here. Um, yep. One made out to your company, and one made out to you. Talk to me a little yep. bit about these. Um, the one's uh, two thousand, the other's uh, sixteen thousand. How does that work? Yeah, so this uh, deal that uh, we're talking about here specifically was actually a partner wholesale deal. And so this was one that uh, I was actually on Craigslist, you know, looking for some deals. And I had seen this one uh, located not too far from where I live. And I could tell that it was another investor. And I was uh, hungry. And so I reached out to him and I said, hey, you know, I got a large cash buyer's list. Well, first of all, I built great rapport with him, just shared with him my story. Um, and I said, hey, you know, I got a large cash buyer's list. You know, if I were to bring a buyer into this deal, uh, would you be interested on in splitting it? And uh, it, we we didn't really talk too much about what the split looked like from there. Um, he said, yeah, you know, I'd be really happy to do that. Let's, let's do this. And so that uh, Friday night, I had uh, sent it out to my cash buyer's list. And that Saturday, we had an open house. We met at the house. But there was three buyers there. Um, one hard money and then two cash buyers and uh, so the two cash buyers were ready to purchase um, then and there and so uh, we just kind of had an open small bidding I guess you could say and I think we actually sold the property 3000 above what we were asking for it um, and so yeah we uh, got an $18,000 assignment is what it was there and then um, the, the $2,000 was just a check from the investor, and then uh, my partner, who I did the deal with, uh, once uh, things got closed, he uh, cut me the, the four thousand dollar check there, and so I walked away with six thousand, and he walked away with twelve thousand, and uh, yeah, I was I was more than happy. I wasn't going to get greedy um, and try to negotiate, uh, you know, too much there to where you know it, it wasn't uh, you know going to be. Well, I guess in the sense of didn't want to, you know, lose a deal over just not, uh, you know, being happy with what, what I got there. And so I was more than happy taking the six grand and uh, reinvested it back in the business and some more marketing, and that's where we're at right now. Awesome. Well, let me show some pictures here of the property itself. As you can see, um, well, you're not seeing right now, but you sent me the picture, so you know what I'm talking about, the front door here. Um, there, It's a little bit... Uh, well, it looks like it's not necessarily been lovingly cared for. Would that be a <laughs> fair way to say that? Um, yeah, yeah, this deal was pretty interesting. So, like I said, I wasn't the one to lock it up in a contract, but my partner who did, uh, he was doing some direct mail to, it might have been uh, absentee owner, maybe tax delinquent, and uh, this guy had sat on his mail piece for like a year and he, he flew up from, I think it was Texas, the homeowner, and said, hey, I'm in town, you know, let's meet at the property, I'm ready to sell it. And so my partner went and met with him and the house had been vacant for quite a while. Um, and yeah, 
contract. Yeah, cool. Well, the front was uh, a little bit, uh, you know, tra the side looks nice. I, I worry when you're in those rainy, humid climates such as you are there, when you have a tree that's so large, so close to the house, because these trees emit a lot of humidity. Um, I grew up in upstate New York, and in the summer it was as humid as, humid as any place you're going to go, if you know what I mean. And yeah. we had trees that were close to the house, but we had humidifiers, and uh, or dehumidifiers, I'm sorry. And my job, well, my mom was never a happy camper if I let one of those you know, dehumidifiers stop running because it filled up, you know what I mean? I had to empty it before it filled up, if you know what I mean. That was my job, get that rascal emptied so that it was working all the time. And we didn't have a problem, but myself and my brother, we were very busy emptying dehumidifiers on a regular basis, you know what I mean? So, yeah, that's a... Totally, you know, that's... Yeah. Is that, is that, it's quite a rainy state up here in Washington, um, but, uh, yeah, but the outside of the house, like you said, it wasn't in too terrible condition. It was just uh, you know, maybe wasn't something that you've noticed when you're driving for dollars. But um, well, when you look at it yeah. here, when you look, at, I'm looking in the kitchen. Okay, yep. it's obvious it has solid bones. Yeah, and uh, yeah. It was, yeah. So now, what are these people planning to do with it, uh, Dylan? What's uh... Yeah, so uh, funny enough, I actually met with uh, my end buyer here today. Um, it's been about maybe a month or, month or two months since that property is closed now. Um, him and I were just catching up and uh, going over some other business, and he actually is buying it to flip it. And so, um, yeah, I think uh, closed it at... Um, 128 there, and then ARV is 240 or 250. So, um, and that was a conservative ARV. So, yeah, that the uh, that. I'm looking at the upstairs room, which has been kind of a storage thing, but it turns yeah. very nicely into a bedroom, and the yeah. uh, the window could be turned into an egress window easy enough, and you could put a closet in there easy enough. And then you have another bedroom. And I don't know if that's their plan or what they're thinking or what the deal is. But um, Yeah, definitely. Well, that's uh, some, some good uh, suggestions. And I think definitely with any uh, flippers, that's their job is to be able to maximize the space that they get to uh, get top dollar for the house, uh, whether if they're going to rent it or resell it. So I'm, I'm no doubt that that's what he's doing. Yeah, and, and my brother and I, when we grew up, we lived in a room like this. And... It was, um, uh, we had dressers, each of us had our own dresser. There was no closet, but you didn't have to have one. It was our own home, if you know what I mean. So we didn't need a closet, so we just, that's the way we, we lived up there. And it was good because we were far enough away, they couldn't hear us uh, talking about right. our parents. <laughs> yeah, well, cool. Yeah. And then uh, this shows your real estate purchase and sale agreement. You got that going for you. You put that together and got that done, and there you go. Um, That's definitely. Uh, I'll have all contracts uh, reviewed by a, a lawyer, a real estate attorney. Uh, make sure uh, everything's included there if you're not using it. And then that's all agreement, so MLS agreement. Yeah. That's good advice for anyone listening. It really is, no doubt about it. I look back over my career, I wouldn't be in the position I'm in if I hadn't had some success, but I've had some failures as well. And the failures, I look back and I say, where did I fail? And uh, far and away, the biggest failures I ever had in my life was not using an attorney when I needed one. Without a doubt. That was it. So, there well, you have it. Well, you said it, you said it was a failure, but, you know, as the quote goes, it's only a failure to give up. So it was, a, it was a hurdle for you there, Ted. Yep, it did. It, it was a setback, I guess. It's go go uh, directly to, to uh, jail, don't pass go, or whatever it is. I didn't actually go to real jail, but I did go to backwards many steps without collecting any revenue. So uh, there you have it. But uh, anything else, um, uh, Dylan, that you wanted to add here uh, for us? Uh, 
Yeah, definitely. I, uh, I'd love to share a little bit of wisdom. Uh, I will, I'll try to support you guys, too. I just thought, you know, one thing that uh, I was speaking with another buddy here of mine who was looking to get into wholesaling, and, uh, you know, one thing I told him, I said, if you do a moderate amount of work in any other field, you'll get a moderate amount of results. If you do a moderate amount of work in wholesaling or real estate investing, you'll get no results. And so it's so cliche to say, you know, go out and take action. Um, but I think that's really what it comes down to, you know, because I can speak from personal experience. Everybody gets locked in with their analysis paralysis. They want the offer to be perfect. They want the ARBs um, to be perfect. They want the repair cost to be perfect. Um, and the reality is it doesn't have to be perfect. You learn over time and from taking action. Um, and the next thing would be is just go out and network with people. Build a buyer's list, you know at least, you know, uh, 30, 30 buyers is, is easy to come around in any market. Um, network with other wholesalers. Get active in your real estate groups. Um, go out and just hit the pavements, I guess, drive the dollars, door knock, and just uh, take massive action. Yeah. I'll, Dylan, I, I actually look for you to be one of the most successful people in this business in a very, very short order. It seems like when you're young like you are, um, at, that you just, you're willing to do what people ask you to do, you know, that, that a lot of people think they're coachable, but they're not coachable, and you obviously have been coachable, you've done what was expected of you, you've made some money, you're ready to go, and have some more deals, no doubt about that, so. Yeah, I appreciate that very, very much, and I think when anybody takes this path of, uh, you know, creating their own income, they understand that there needs to be additional uh, effort required. You know, you can't just show up and uh, sit there and get paid. you got to actually go out and do something. And so uh, that's just a uh, tidbit for, for anybody who's looking to uh, make a fortune in uh, real estate. Awesome. Well, Dylan, I have enjoyed this conversation very much. I'm going to, if I make the video too long, they won't let me put it up. So I'm going to... Uh, Pause the video. <laughs>